Hi guys, Darren from Venom Florida. We're Bubbles. Can't forget Bubbles. Cause I won't let ya. No doubt. Thanks Tinker. Thought I'd bring her in. Right. She's just cute. So, this week we have part four of our swipe series. We do. What are we going to do today? Well, our amazing friend and fantastic artist, Lucia. Lucia Rossi. Yes. Amazing. Does some beautiful work. You should check out her YouTube page. But she did ask, ask us if um, we do a rundown on how we do our minimalising swipes. Okay. Hmm. And just how we work on composition, what we do. So I thought we'd get some um, loaded palette knives out. Okay. Because they're the best for minimalising. Okay. Well, I think so anyway. Yeah. Others could say I'm wrong, but whatever. We're gonna get. We're gonna roll with it. Well, we can do them two different ways. Absolutely. We can do a loaded palette knife, and then we can just do like a normal swipe, but keep them minimalistic, so we end up with a whole heap of negative space. Absolutely. How's that sound? I think that sounds perfect. Okay, let's rock and roll. All right. So what I'm going to do, I've got a probably about eight eight inch round yep. here. Yep. Eight inch MDF round. So what I'm going to show you is two is. You can actually mix your pillow paint when you're doing this too. Yeah, you can. Just for different effects. So that's what I want to do with this. So we've got a low sheen British Paints white. Yep. Straight out of the tin, nothing's added to it, nothing's been done to it. Which is an interior wall paint here in Australia. Yep. Um, if you're overseas, you can use like Glidden Premium or something like that. Um, that black you've just laid down yep. is British Paints Low Sheen in the black. Yep. Which is still an interior paint as well. Absolutely. So they're going to work well together. Yeah. I've used blues, yellows, different colours. Yeah, they all work really good. You can mix it up. So today what I'm going to do though, I'm going to use, because it's only a small piece, I'm not going to use, usually you can use between, depending on your size, what you're going to use. On your palette knives. Yeah. So this one, as you can see, that's going to take up way too much with this size piece if I wanted to do keep the minim minimalize about it. Yeah. So that's why I'm going to go for this one. So that way I can keep it quite fine. Yeah. When I go for the swipes. Okay. Alrighty. So what I'm going to do first is I've got a really cool purple CA. So... I'm going to just load a thin layer, so I've just got my um, fluid-art.co company oh. do these great little things here, which are fantastic. If I turn this camera this way, you can actually see you load it up a little bit easier. How's that? Awesome. So, the other thing too, you don't need a lot on there, so you can see I can hold that upside down. And, it and it's there, off. still there. Nothing's hitting that um, piece underneath. So that's all you need. Don't need a great deal. So now I'm just going to change it up a bit with a little bit of blue CA as well. And then what I'm going to do is we're just going to lay on this piece because what we're going to do is come across the black. So I'm just going to run just a slither of Solar Gold by Perlex on there. So you can see there's just a little bit. Just drizzle. I'm going to get some enchantment from this little piggy. Just drizzle it on. Because on this one, I really want the two really cool colour CAs to stand out as well. But I just want to give them a little bit of extra something. That's why I'm putting a little bit of paint over the top. Just so I get different colours coming through in the cells when we swipe. So, all I do, slight angle when I'm working it, and I'm going to get on the angle so you can see it's lifted up at the front there, and I'm going to come down, and as I'm working that through the paint, I've got a semi-floating pillow, I just slowly lay that palette knife forward a bit as I go through, that way I'm getting the rest of the colour that was underneath, you can see it hits the pillow. Makes sense? Yep. Cool. Because half the time, 
I don't know what to get what's in my head out <laughs> on how I do things because yeah. you just get so used to rolling with it and what you've practiced and experimented with to get to work for you. Exactly. And the way I do it can be completely different to what other people do. But this has just been the way that with my trial and error that I found works for me to get the results I want. Yeah. So I'm going to do the same again. Just a little drizzle of that solar gold. I'm going to get a little bit of that enchantment again. And I think this purple is actually Darren's favourite Montmartre tube paint. Yeah, it's a pearl purple by Montmartre. It is absolutely gorgeous for a tube paint. So you can see I've left the black there. That's going to be for a reason. So now what I'm going to do is pick my next spot. Slight angle. And as I'm weaving up through the paint, light hands, not pressing hard. And then I'm just going to lift it up. And I better get some fresh paper towel. So what I think is really cool about these two for beginners is you can see how much colour with the pigments and the tube paint I used. A really tiny bit of slither. But look how much colour is actually on there. So you get some great depth through your cells at effects, but we've used next to nothing in that paint, yeah. which I think is really cool. And it will spread out when you spin it. Because I've got, I like to have a, a floating pillow when I do these, only because I find that while you're practicing especially and you're working that palette knife through the paint, having a floating pillow just makes it really smooth and a lot easier to put that palette knife through the paint. Where I find if I spin it out, I was getting this jagged moment all the time, like I was hitting the bottom of the piece, because there wasn't that much paint separating between my palette knife and the bottom of this. Yeah. So this way for me, having that floaty pillow just makes it nice and smooth and heaps easier to move your wrist and your hand around and... It just, I don't know, just, I think it's a lot easier. It works better for you. Yeah. So now what I'm going to do, I think we'll grab some black CA out. And like with the rest, I'm just putting a really thin layer on there. Because with these two, a little bit, I'll just drop that right in there. All right, a little bit goes a long way. <laughs> Mix it in. Yeah, Wombat's not looking, people. It'll be fine. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put just a little slither of that purple onto my black. And I'm going to load up some gold. And I'm going to make this one a bit more rich in colour, a bit thicker. So then I've got my enchantment, my Montmartre. I love a tube paint in these. I just think it helps keep the cells together. It's just my thing. I think we'll add a bit of this dark purple this time. Just a little bit. So that's now what we've got. So what I'm thinking, we might go for something around here. Just like that. Now, what I'm sort of thinking when you do these as well, because a lot of people worry about their composition, this, that, and the other. If you're worried about what things are going to do, you can always do your first swipes like I did first, and then just give it a spin, just to see how it's going to move before you do more. Because if you found that you've put a little bit too much paint on these and it moves a, a whole lot, you're not really going to want more swipes if you want to keep that bit of negative space. Yeah. But you, you'll, you'll get there with trial and error and you'll start to know just by looking at what's sitting there whether you can add to it or not. And it's just one of those things that just, it really does just take time and practice and knowing when to stop. That's the hardest part because sometimes 
it's just a whole heap of fun. And we get carried away. Absolutely. And before you know it, you go, where did my negative space go? Yeah. <coughs> but you could have already come up with something pretty cool. That's the great thing with fluid art. You don't have to start off with that technique and stick to it. Because sometimes it just takes you somewhere else. Go with it. Exactly. All right. Beautiful. Thank you. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it like that now. Yeah. Because I think we're pretty, um, with our loaded palette knives, we're pretty even across. Yep. So I think what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to grab my skewer out. And I'm just going to put a few little cool groovy patterns through here. So you can see I'm not doing anything over fancy or over complicated that no one can have a go. I'm just weaving like a snake. But you can see how it loops your cells and when they open up, they just look really cool. So if you're worried at this stage and you're thinking, what's it gonna do? There's no problem with what we're gonna do. Oh, I think I just had a goober. You do have a goober in that. We'll just work it out. There we go. See? Crisis averted. All right. So see, that way we've got a nice little pattern through our black. Just a bit of feature coming off the palette knife swipes. So with these, usually if I do a bloom or a normal style swipe, I spin the bejesus out of them. It's just who I am. Yes. And I like the effects. So, but with these, I go a little bit slower, just because you've got to think you've only put a little bit of colour in your paint on there. So you don't want to spin it too fast and lose that. You want it just to open up nice and even. Now with these, with the floating pillow too, I like to take it to where I call the halfway mark so I can see that my floating pillow is just slowly, it's still got a little bit to go. I can see like a little hump on the edge. So I'll just give it one more spin. Always going one way, then the other. Just to even up your cells. So, this is our chance now, because we've still got movement in our pillow. If there's pieces in there that you don't like, or you might like it, but you just want to add that little something extra to it, this is your chance to do it before you do your final spin. So I'm going to come in here. And just give that something there. I actually like all that bit. I think that's opened up really pretty. But see here, I got like a bit of a blob of that um, dark dark in purple. So if I want to give that a little bit of something, just weave it in and out what's next to it. And then it sort of just breaks it up a bit just by dragging some of that color from the outer edges here. So it doesn't look so bold. Gives it a little bit of character, I reckon. So you can really see it's nothing overcomplicated. Anyone can really just get in and have a go. Absolutely. Just experiment with it and just see where it's going to take you. Make it an adventure. So I'm just going to give these... A little bit of something there. So you can see that black gives it like a silhouette effect. I think it's really pretty, sort of like a tribal effect, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And I think it's just nice having that coming off the cells. 
a little bit of boldness. I've still got a bit of a goober in there. How rude was that? <laughs> but no big deal. You can see you can just go in. Make a different pattern out of it. Roll him out. And get rid of it. So I'm pretty happy with that now. I think it looks pretty cool. So what I'm going to do... Now we've finished all of our embellishments through it. We will try and put it in the middle of the spinner. Everyone knows Bubbles has that issue. Not even close. That's mm, one day. <laughs> when I'm a grown up just like you, Wombat. I'm going to find the middle of that spinner. At the moment, it's my unicorn. It is. There we go. So you can see they travelled up really nice just around the sides. We've got our two centre pieces coming up. And the whole piece looks pretty balanced, you know what I mean? Yeah. Nothing sort of looks out of place where you go, oh, mm, probably should have done something there. And it's used hardly any paint to do that. Exactly right. So, so cool for beginners to have a go at because if you are on a strict budget, you don't have to spend a lot to get really cool effects. That's it, exactly. And you can do it all with tube paints as well. Well, yeah, you can. You just add your, um, realistically, we're only adding our pigments for your extra extra depth and bling. Yeah. But while you're starting out, don't waste your money yet. It's like the Pebio range has a whole heap of iridescent colours that look absolutely phenomenal, and they're just tube paints. They've got a load of bling in them, so... Or you can add metallics like your deco arts and things like that. Absolutely. Get your bling the cheap way. Yeah. While you're practicing. So what we might do is we'll pause here now that this one's done. Yep. And we'll come back to how you do yours. Okie dokie. We'll be back. Okie dokie. So, I'm going to do mine on a heart and I'm going to go for something really minimalistic. Um, what I will do is grab a little palette knife. I'm going to use white selectivator. I'm just going to put some on there. Like that. I'll grab the purple. Add some on. Grab the blue which is very dark blue, almost purple, like that. And all I'm going to do is go like that, get to here. I'm going to tilt the palette knife up on an angle and just rotate it. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's nice, easy, little swipe. So all I did was come round, swipe, and then tilt. That way you get your fine line. That way you get my little tail that runs off it. And them gorgeous little cells. Super, super easy to do. I do have to highlight those little cells. They are pretty. <laughs> They're gorgeous. So that's the loaded palette knife part of it. So if you wanted to do one where you'd lay your actual colours on the piece, what you can do is just lay some colour down like that. So we'll go with a fluorescent yellow. And that's one of the Barnes Yellows fluoros. They're really cheap as well. Like they're yeah. not an expensive product. And no, they're really, not. Really, really effective. Their neons just pop, don't they? Yep. So this is the magenta, which is a Barnes as well. 
So I'm only putting a tiny little bit down. You don't have to go overboard because it will spread out when you spin it. But the beauty of doing minimalistic stuff is you only use a tiny little bit of paint and it's super, super easy to get effects. All right, then we're going to add our blue. Like that. That's taffy. It is taffy. I can spot this little piggy taffy a mile away. All right, I'm going to use the white cell activator again. You can use black, entirely up to you. So I'm just going to put that down the same as I did the last time. Under the little palette knife. Then what I'm going to do is just hold it at a bit of an angle. Smooth it out like that. Tilt. Rotate. Now what we'll do is give that time to sink and do its thing. While we're waiting, I'll grab my one to skewer. So what I'm going to do is just go from the outside in. So just curve that around like that. So by doing that, as it spreads out, they'll open up. This side, what we'll do is drag some out in a different direction. So you can just mess around running your skewer through at different angles in different places just to get a different composition. And the trick to it being minimalistic is don't put too much paint on, don't put too much pillow on. That way it can't spread out very far when you do spin them out. And so we just put a couple of little fancy patterns through like that. That's how I'm going to leave it. I've got a drop of pink there I'll get rid of. Just dab on it and it disappears. Alright, now if you want that more down a little bit, just give it a bit of a tilt. Don't go nuts with it, just let it move slowly. That way you can centralise it up. Like that. Go for the centre of the spinner. We'll just go slowly, that way you can see where things start moving. If it moves off too much to one side, move it across on the spinner a bit, just to level it out a bit. Alright, so that's starting to open up nice now. Oh, that one little cell pop through there. That's gorgeous. It's stunning. Okay, go back the other way just to even it up. Let it run a little bit. And... Oh, look at that. Oh, look at those beautiful there cells we go. through the tail, the tiny ones. Didn't they open up beautiful? So we'll pop this one up. You end up with something really cool like that. Super minimalistic. Nothing on there was overly hard to do. Just a basic little swipe. Same with laying your colours down, which was this one here. Just laid the colours down. Little swipe. Tilt your little palette knife on an angle. 
rotate it. And aren't those effects crazy cool? Mess with the skewer a bit, get some composition into it, and it's um, turned out really pretty. Yeah, yeah, like you've got a lot of negative space. Heaps of negative space. Everything's so even from side to side, which is really beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. I like doing stuff like this where there's a lot of negative space in it because it gives your eyes somewhere to rest. That's right. You know, you've got some gorgeous pieces like the cells and stuff through here and through there. And you really can have a good look, can't you? Yeah, and that's appreciate used it. next to no paint. Absolutely. Apart from the pillow paint, obviously. Yeah, that's probably the most paint you've used. Yeah, definitely. It doesn't use a lot of CA? No. Tiny drop of cell activator, so... You know, if you use an Aussie flow troll, don't stress. It's only like a tiny drop, really. But you get some great, beautiful effects. And you get some effects. cool results. A little bit of elegance. Yeah, it's delicate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely think it's elegance. But nice and simple to do. You've just got to remember, a little bit goes a long way. Yeah. That's the biggest trick to them. Yeah, don't go overboard. That way mm. you get... A, Heaps of negative space that way. Absolutely. And then if you wanted to totally cover that, you can do the same thing. Put a bigger SWAT tool down with a lot more paint on, and it'll cover a lot more area. So it just depends on what you're going for. Exactly. All right. We'll pause there and do one more, I think. Cool bananas. Okey dokey. We, we are, are back. back. <laughs> what do you got in store for us now, Bubble? Well, I'm thinking now we'll yeah, do yeah, a yeah. different type of swipe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So still minimalistic. Yep. You lose a little bit more colour with these. Yeah. But not a great deal. Okay. So what we're going to do is I've got my floating pillow again. So the trick to remember, and I think one of the biggest tricks to remember with your floating pillow, it moves. Yes. That's the biggest thing. Because you may put so much paint down, do your swipe, but you've got to remember how much you're putting on now is going to spin out. Yes. And it's going to continuously move. <laughs> yeah. That's the biggest trick, I think, with these. Because that's where a lot of people sort of, I think, get heartbroken because... You spin it out and lose a lot of it. Exactly right. So it's one thing to keep in mind is just remember how much you're putting down it is definitely going to move. Especially with a floaty pillow. Absolutely. And I mean... So the difference between a floating pillow and a spun out pillow is the floating pillow, there's a whole heap more paint down compared to a spun out pillow. You've added a little bit, spun it out so it just covers the surface and that's it. And Bubbles loves a floaty pillow. For you these. do. And that's, it's just a preference too. It really is just a preference. Like some people may find that doing these, that the, the spun out pillow is easier for them. Absolutely. But just with the way that I obviously lay that palette knife through the paint, it's, it's easier for me to have a floating pillow. Exactly. I mean, try it both ways. See which one you get the best results from and stick with it. Exactly right. Or but... combine the two for different effects. So. Well, so that's another thing too, because sometimes, depending on what I'm doing, I'll have um, I'll spin my pillow out first, and then I'll just put a light ring pillow through the middle. Yeah. I like that with the um, radio swipes. Yeah. It just depends on what effect you really are going for. That's all it is. So all I'm doing right now is just laying colours down in a crazy little wiggly, snake. Wiggly snake? Yep. And that's all I'm doing. So I've just got mine side by side, so I've got a little bit of black through the middle there. Yep. I'm just going to put just a little drizzle, because you've got to remember with gold too, it really can take over. Absolutely it does. So just a little bit sparingly like that can be enough to give you cool highlights. Yep. But not enough to take over. Yeah. And if you're going to do your swipe and you want some cool little effects on the edges, 
You can also get your gold and just put a little trickle. Yep. Just a little bit. Just like that. Beautiful. So, here we go. We're going to add our CA. We're just going to still use our little palette knife. And I'm just going to do a fine layer. If I could really get that angle right, You're fine. you so, guys would be loving that. Yeah, I'll spin <laughs> that back over to there so you can actually see it being loaded. And I'm going to add a little bit of my favourite new Grenache CA you made me. All right, so I'll spin that so you can see. Beautiful. That again. All right, so now... I'm just got my slight angle like I love to do. And I'm gonna just weave that through. And I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna go on a slight little angle like that and lift it up. That way I'm gonna keep my cells pretty close to the same size through there and they're not gonna start to bleed out because I'm running out of CA. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with, if this had been a larger piece with a bigger palette knife, you've got more CA on it, yeah. I could have probably run it all the way through one go. Yeah. But since I've chosen the smaller piece, the smaller tool, I could you can start to see that your cells start to, Get they're not as and, and they're not as defined as well. And yeah. you sort of see that your colours start to bleed together because you're just pushing colour. Yeah. Time to stop. Just tilt her up. Either way, it's easy for you. It doesn't matter if you go to the left or the right. But just stop your swipe and tilt it up and just lift it up, put it away. So then we can load up again. Put our Grenache on with our black. So just a little bit again. So you can see we can do the spin test. Nothing's fallen out. We've got plenty. And I'm going to start here. And I've just got my slight angle. And I'm just light hands. Light hands. You don't have to push through like you're trying to get to the bottom of the piece. You just want to pretend that you're sort of just hitting that colour and moving the colour. Yep, just skimming it across. And skimming across the top. Because it's sometimes when people dig that little bit too deep and you're hitting into the pillow, you're losing your colour. Yeah. Because you're more or less just pushing your colour into your pillow. That's right. So you lose all this potential for these gorgeous cells on top. Exactly. So what I might do here is, is give it a bit of a skewer run. So all I'm going to do... Run it through. Use that bold gold for some highlights, our shooting star. <laughs> so, what we're going to do, I can tell already I haven't got a great deal of colour on, so it's going to move so far. I might want to do something just with the tips. So what you can do, because I don't want to go overboard because I still want it to look minimalistic, but I want just a little bit of something, not a great deal, just a little bit of something on those tips. So what you can do is load up, just say two colours out of your palette. So I'm just going to do a little bit of the um, Inferno, a little bit of the Solar Gold on the black. Now, I know it's a floating pillow, so if I put the swipe down the tip, I'm going to lose it off the edge. So I want to come up a bit. So that way, it's got space to travel. It's going to open up for me, but I'm not going to lose it all. 
So just remember that too. If you are going back in because you want to add something to it, just remember if you do have that floating pillow, <clears throat> if you put it on the edge, the paint's going to all move that way. Whether you spin left or right, it's got to come out. Yeah. So you will lose all of that over the edge if you had to put the swipe on the tip. Exactly. So that is technical advice from Bubbles from losing a hell of a lot over the side. <laughs> so. Yes, yes, you have. I'm hoping I've saved someone from that heartache. Oh, there's nothing worse than doing a beautiful swipe and it looks absolutely gorgeous and you're like, yeah. You're like, I'm happy dancing. Yep, then you spin it out and everything slides straight off the edge. You're, and like, you're like, where what? did it go? Doesn't yeah. it make you want to cry though? Because yeah. you're just like, oh, come on. So the other thing you can do too, we want it even. So we probably want a little bit just here. Just get a little tool out because it's only a little space and you really don't want to overtake it either, do you? No. And that little toolkit you're using for the palette knives, I think that's a pack of five or six or something? Yeah, so in Australia, we can get them in like your reject shops, your Jolly Ollies, yeah. you know, like your bargain stores for 10 to $14. Yeah, they're Montmart ones. And they're fantastic. They're great little palette knives. Super cheap. Rip that handle off. <laughs> yeah, you can pull the handle off and... You can get in nice and close and tight with different things. See, when you're buying... I think we got the last pack for $8. Yes. Even Kmart over here in Australia has them for 8 bucks at the moment. Yeah, nice and cheap. In their cheap. little art section. All so right. For 8 bucks, you don't mind pulling the handles off them. I pulled the handle off it, whether it was 20 bucks. Well, yeah, I know. Because it just works. All right. So Especially I think we'll go with that. When you're learning... Oh, absolutely. You got more feel, I reckon. Yeah, I just feel like I got more control. Yeah. Without it, I'm sort of really awkward. Really awkward. Yeah. That's looking good. So, once again, I can see that it's all starting to move for me. And I'm at that halfway mark. Because I always say the halfway mark because you can still see, and when you actually do look close, you can see where you've still got little pools of paint, whatnot. Yep, you, <clears throat> you can see it's, there's still a lot on there. So, you know, you've got an opportunity now if you want to embellish and whatnot. And you're not going to foculate the paint or anything because you haven't spun it too far. Yeah. So you've got a chance just to fix up your little blobs that you think, I don't like you. Needs a little bit more feature to it. I always say it's when it could be better. Yes. So to me that just gives a little bit of something, a bit more defined. That's a little blend. Just walk that. Sometimes they don't need a great deal. Sometimes you just got to stand back and really have a good look and you'll go, yeah, okay, second glance, that's fine. Leave it alone, spin her out. Biggest trick, I reckon, knowing when to stop. Yeah. It's really hard when you're having fun too because you're like, I just want to stick that skewer in one more time. Exactly. But I think that's the best bit of advice too. Stand back and have a look. Or if you're getting frustrated, walk away. Yep. Then come back and have another look. Yep. Because you might find that when you got that better frame of mind too, because you've already frustrated yourself, sometimes walking away, coming back, you go, there's nothing wrong with that. Exactly. I did okay. Plus it gives time for cell activator and things like that to settle and it always looks different an hour later. It really does. So. Good example. Last week when we were painting. Yes. I did one and thought it was hideous. Yeah, oh, did. I didn't like it, did I? My no. star, I was not happy. And it wasn't actually till um, Darren had said to me, now, Bubbles, leave it alone. Walk away. Just walk away. And then he made me come back and look at it the next day and I was sort of like, 
hey, I should have been happy dancing. That was pretty cool. <laughs> That's exactly but right. But it can be your frame of mind if you've already frustrated the bejesus out of yourself. Exactly. All right. I think that will do it. That's true. You've still got heaps of negative space around all your swipes. How cool is that? And that's the thing. You can see once again, we've actually got still quite a bit of um, negative space going on in places. And we didn't use much paint either. No. Which is really cool. Exactly. So, I'll just... Um, There we go. So that way you can just see you've got your nice little edges there. Not overdone. Didn't wipe my bum. But a little bit can go a long way. Exactly. So what we might do now is um, pause again. Yep. And then you can show the way you do these. Okay. Because we're all different. Cool bananas. Okie dokie. So, 8 inch round. What I'll usually do is, for my spin out pillows, throw some paint down the middle. About there. To start with. Get that as close to the centre of the spinner as you can. Give it a spin and I'll put my finger on the edge. That way it coats the side as it goes. And then spin it right out. Pop that one up. Okay, so there's our spunny up pillow. Super easy to do. Doesn't use that much paint. Right, just scrape the excess off here. Okay, so what I will do is start throwing some colours down. Um, but um, but um, but um, what shall I use? All right, so what I'm going to do is draw a line right in the middle. All right, so that's our purple. I love that purple. It's awesome. I love it's really it. Really beautiful. You always keep a spare tube, don't you? I do. I've actually got two spare tubes of that. <laughs> but don't tell anyone. He would cry if he ran out, people. Yes. There's our yellow. We would definitely see wombat tear points. Absolutely. Go with our magenta. I've actually seen him shop three shops all over town. <laughs> If one shops out. <laughs> yes, I do. I just like what I like. Absolutely we do. We all do. Alright, so this is just going to be a basic swipe. Very minimalistic. Nothing overly hard. Alright, there's our taffy. This little piggy. You'd love it. I'm just going to stick with them colours. Yep. No. We're going to make it super easy because the more colour you put down, the more it's going to spread out on you and lose your minimalistic side of it. Okay. We'll grab some black selectivator and our little swipe tool that I just put down there in amongst all the paint. Nice job, Wombat. That's why I got you the caddy. You did, and I still fail to use it. I can admit it. <laughs> Proud of you. Right, what I'm going to do is 
got my selectivator on here and let's start from about halfway around like that So there's heaps of different ways you can do this. Oh, all no. different angles, all different shapes. The list goes on. And everyone, look at that big blue bubble. <laughs> it is a big blue bubble. It's very cool. I'm going to do the same on this side. Like that. You'll notice where the cell activator is in the middle. There's a lot more of it, so it takes a lot longer to sink. If you want to cheat, grab a straw. Give it a blow straight up and down. Because once again, if you do go across on an angle, you're going to go into your really cool cells that have already formed and you don't want to upset them. Yeah, so if you blew that on an angle like that, it's going to want to push them all out and do weird things. Grab our little skewer again. I'm just going to do little loops. Super easy. Just loop it back through the middle like that. Same with this side. Go the other direction. And all I'm doing is dropping that in between where the loops are. Like that. Then if you want something in this negative space, it's easy enough to just grab a section here, and drag a little wispy bit out. It's over there, and drag a little wispy bit out. I usually go in between, I'll find a gap in between here, coming through here, Drag it out. So the sky's the limit for this sort of stuff. It's all up to your own imagination. You can make it as mild or as wild as you really want. Entirely up to you. Sometimes wild's just fun. <laughs> it is. Now, because I've spun that pillow right out, I shouldn't get too much movement. It's only the paint that's on top of that pillow that's gonna slide. So I might lose a bit of this, but the center really isn't gonna spread out too much because there isn't enough pillow paint there for it to float very far. And I haven't got too much swipe colors down either. That's why you like your spun out pillow, don't you? That's why I like the spun out pillow. I can control where I want things to go a lot easier than when it is a full floating pillow like you do. All right, always go for the center of your spinner. Just give it a spin, let it roll. Go back the other way. You don't have to go crazy nuts with it. I mean, your fingers can walk that quick. <laughs> So the center started to spread a little bit and we're only losing a tiny little bit on the edges. So where's the angle? Only a little bit's come off. That's because we didn't put too much paint down and the, the pillow paint's been totally spun right out. Less chance for cracking too. Way less chance for cracking. If you do do it my way, you've really got to make sure that you do spin it out enough. Exactly. And you've got no movement left because otherwise you can either get them horrible trenches where you've played with your skewer through it or you can get cracks. So yep. always make sure if you do it my way and have that floaty pillow, spin it right out. No movement's got to be left there. So now we've ended up. Beautiful results.
It's something like that. So where I had the bits along the bottom here that spread out, I've spun those off to leave these patterns here. It just gives you a cool composition for something a little bit different. And that there is super, super easy to do. And you don't use a lot of paint. Yep. That's pretty. I like that. I really like that. <laughs> Gorgeous. See, it's all that old theory, sometimes less is best. Exactly. You know, and then if once that's dry and cured, you want to go in and do some embellishments on it, like little butterflies here and there. I was just about to say butterfly. <laughs> yeah, like it leaves it wide open to you because you've got so much negative space to play with. Absolutely. So you can have your little butterflies or bumblebees or whatever floats your boat. That one, butterflies. I like butterflies. <laughs> yeah. All right. I hope that was some sort of help. Just remember, this is part four of our swipe series. So there'll be a link in the description for part one, two, and three for you. Yeah. So you can go back and watch them one after another. So it's virtually starting off at the very beginning of learning to swipe and then progressing as we go. Absolutely, through all the different, um, all the different possibilities yeah, with swipes. Exactly. There's so many different things you can do with swipes compared to blooms and... Stuff like that, so... Absolutely. Definitely yes. worth a watch, guys. Because a lot of fun to be had. If this has been any help to you whatsoever, please hit like, share, and subscribe. Ring that notification bell. Thanks, Tinker. That way you get to see all these videos as we release them. If you've got any dramas, just drop a link... Uh, uh, drop a link. Drop a comment into the comment section. And we'll try and answer them as quick as we can. If you're a member of Paint Pouring by Venom Fluid Art on Facebook, we usually get back to that a hell of a lot quicker than we can on YouTube. Absolutely, because Bubbles is always watching. Yeah, you're always in there. So. Nothing but positivity there. And that's a totally free group. It costs nothing. Absolutely, but private and... Yeah, private and safe space, so... Absolutely. Amazing people. All right, guys. That's it from us today, so... Have fun, take care, and, and we'll, we'll see you in, in the, the next, next one. one. Bye for now. Have a fantastic day, guys. Thanks for watching.